So Google Gemini just launched a brand new model called 1.5 Pro with Deep Research. And it's having a similar moment like Notebook LM did a few months ago. That's not bad for team at Google with like two big hits in like six to eight months time. So in this video, we'll go through what this new model is, how to use it, and my six favorite use cases where you can use this model to save a lot of time. All right, let's dive in. So this feature is part of Google Gemini Advanced. And unlike Notebook LM, sadly, this one isn't free. But with every Google account, you can use one month for free, which is what I have right now. So watch the video till the end to see for yourself if this is worth $20 for you or not. So once you start your free month with Google Gemini, Gemini Advanced and you go to the Gemini app, under the drop down, you're gonna see this new model called 1.5 Pro with Deep Research. In a nutshell, it is what it says. It's just gonna deep research the topic you're researching on. So you know, like when you use the ChatGPT search feature or use perplexity, how you use perplexity when you search a topic, it goes through like three or four sources and it finds you the summary of that information. With the deep research tool, it goes a lot deeper. So I'll just show you an example so you'll have a better idea what I'm talking about and then we'll get into the use cases. So I'm gonna go to Gemini app. I'm gonna go to the drop down here. I'm gonna pick the 1.5 Pro with deep research as my model. And now I'm just gonna type my simple prompt. So I'm just gonna say, can you please research the challenges businesses face in terms of adopting AI. So the first, what it's gonna do is it's gonna create the research plan. So here we have like seven steps in the research plan. It's gonna go through the challenges. It's gonna go through some case studies of businesses adopting it or unsuccessfully. And it's gonna go through different types of AI and challenges associated with each one of them. Then it's gonna go find information about the costs and benefits. It's gonna go through ethical implications, social implications, impact of AI adoption on the workforce, and also the role of government and regulation and AI adoption. Uh, it seems pretty thorough but let's say you're not happy with the research that you're trying to do. Maybe you want to add more things into your topics of research. So all you can do is like, just go to the edit option here. You can just go to the edit plan and just ask it to change whatever you want it to do. Again, very natural language as if you're chatting with the tools like ChatGPT or Gemini and all that stuff. So I'm just gonna say, can you also add research on data privacy concerns? And now it's gonna update the plan and now we have a list of eight topics to go through and the eighth one is the data privacy that we just added. So once we hit start research, only Perplexity or Gemini or ChatGPT with the search option where it just looks at the first few websites it comes across or whatever it's, it's referencing to, it's gonna like first find like like whole bunch of websites that would have that topic. In this particular example, we have 74 websites. Imagine like yourself doing the research, like, you know, let's say this is a topic we wanna to research. We'll go onto Google, we'll type it in, you know, the old school way. Then we'll click on the first link, we'll open a new tab, open a new tab, open a new tab. We'll have like 10 different links open that we think are useful. And then we're gonna read through all of them. And then we're gonna try to make notes and try to find all the information that's relevant to the topic that we're researching on. This in a nutshell basically does all that, but automatically. So for this topic, Topic, it has identified about 74 websites it's gonna research through. So we have websites like Princeton Review, Harvard Business School, we have PMI, we have a few more, which I don't really recognize uh, in terms of like what they do and what the credibility is for them. But if we scroll further down, we see a blog post from Tableau, we see a blog post from DigitalOcean, we see a post from IBM. So it's going through all the sources and it does take like a few minutes to do the whole research, which is a good thing, I guess. So I know it's actually doing some work and not just like giving me whatever results. Nice. So once the research is conducted, it's gonna generate me the report. So here we have the introduction. We have a section called benefits of AI adoption, integrating AI into existing operations. There's some case studies. Here we see a success story with Gym Nation, where they implemented AI agents to enhance the member experience, operational efficiency, and all that stuff. There's a couple of failure stories. There's one with Amazon, where they talk about having a bias against women. There's one Microsoft AI chatbot, which was corrupted by Twitter trolls. And then there's one about like Apple Face ID. I'm not sure if like this one's so relevant to the research I was trying to do. But again, you know, we can go and look at the source it's pulling the information from, and it is pulling up an information from an article that does talk about like AI, like implementation. So maybe it is relevant. But again, you know, like based on the research you're doing and whatever is relevant to you or not, you can edit those things. If you scroll further down, we see data management, skills and knowledge gaps, cost of AI adoption, ethical and social implications. We see like a table here with types of AI and associated challenges. We see like a role of government, you know, privacy implications and conclusion and the work cited. So basically a deep research. And if you wanna make changes, you have any follow-up questions, you can just chat with the Gemini model on the left. Again, just like how we chat with other LLM tools. Or if you're happy with everything it has provided, you can just open this in Google Docs and you have your first version of your research ready and you can just take it from there and do whatever you have to do with the research after that. Pretty cool, right? So this is the deep research tool and how to use it. So now let's talk about some useful use cases. All right, so the first up is, I have a presentation coming up in like three weeks time and one of my topics is gonna to be uh, adoption. So I have to do some research then like bring my own experience and like build out the whole presentation tech. So what if I just use the Gemini deep research tool like we just did, I can ask you to do the research and I can copy all the data. Then I can go to tools like gamma.app, paste all my research 
and then boom, I have my research done by AI turned into a presentation in literally seconds. Of course, it's AI, so it's gonna be the first draft. I have to go in, I have to review the information, I have to see whatever I'm doing actually makes sense or not. I have to incorporate my own experience into the presentation because that's why I'm being invited as a speaker, right? But the point is, you know, if you do have to do a presentation, you have to do a report, you have to do like a white paper, you have to do a lead magnet, you can just use the deep research tool, do all the research and turn the research into the artifact for the work you're trying to do. Using that. All right, the next thing I found this tool useful for is competitor and market research. Let's say I'm working on a new startup idea for my venture studio. I wanna know who else is already doing this, or who are the competitors, what is the market landscape? Is this the opportunity worth pursuing for me or not? I mean, I can ask ChatGPT for it, but again, it's just making information up. I need actual data, like based on what's already on the internet. If I use this deep research tool, I just say like, you know, I'm trying to build this software product, users will be able to do this. Can you do a deep research about the competitor landscape and the opportunity size for this idea? The tool is gonna go through a whole bunch of resources and do the research for me. And instead of me first finding all the competitors then going through their feature set, what pricing do they offer? I have all this done for me in seconds. This is just an example for an email marketing tool and their deep research model is going through all the competitors. So we have Active Campaign, we have Clavio, we have Get Response, MailChimp, MoonSend, Constant Contact. We have like OmniSend. It goes through all the features and their pricing. There's a bunch of other competitors. There's a table with all the features, which I can also export to Google Sheets. There's a market size, there's challenges and opportunities. So it is pretty comprehensive and I have sources at the bottom to just to confirm that, you know, the the sources were credible, it did the research, and I can believe the research to be accurate, it's not hallucinating. Deep research model is pretty good at it, it's pretty comprehensive, gets the job done. Another thing I found this tool to be useful for is like looking at trends. Let's say I asked deep research model to research creator economy trends for my influencer marketing strategy. And now we have this model go through like 63 different sources. Again, right now we only see like websites, but you'll see later in the video where like this will query not just the websites, but also like TikTok, YouTube, like, you know, multimodal sources. So it goes through like 63 different sources and comes back with the insights I care about. Let's go through a couple of these to see if they actually make sense or not. Here we talk about like creators as media companies where creators are building their own teams, launching their own brands, expanding into new ventures. True, I have my venture studio, we build software products, so I can leverage my you know, creator side as a media company to get the marketing done. It talks about long form content as making a comeback. Again, true, you're watching me here. If you have known me from 2020, 2021, back on TikTok days, here I am focusing on YouTube now. So like, you know, I'm considering long form content as a serious thing for myself. It says rise in in-person experiences. I agree to that. I'm focusing a lot on like, you know, doing a lot more speaking engagements this year as well, because I wanna like connect with people more person to person versus just like, you know, being in front of the camera. I think it's hitting these things bang on. I mean, as a creator myself, like with the things how I feel, it's, it's pretty accurate. So I'm pretty impressed with the research I was able to do, uh, you know, just in like two minutes or so. Anyway, the point is that if you are looking for trends, you wanna understand what's happening in your industry, in your space, in whatever trend you wanna analyze, you can leverage this tool, let it go through it and see if uh, those trends make sense to you, if you learn something from those, if you gather any valuable insights, which can help you in your business or your work. All right, moving on. So just like how we are able to like discover the trends that might be happening underneath the surface, the same way we can discover customer insights and customer sentiment. All right, let's do one more research here. So I'm gonna ask deep research model, how do founders feel about VC industry in the US and in Asia? Now, again, we have a research plan. I'm just gonna stick with it. Seems pretty good. Here we can see the sources the research tool is going through. We have a TikTok video. We have like a bunch of YouTube videos. So it's trying to like pull all the interviews, like, you know, every time a founder has talked about VC. So it's trying to pull all that information, go through all the information for the research so it can present the research report. And in just a few minutes, we have our research report ready to go. So this is just one example where you can use it for customer insights. But like, let's say you are an e-commerce brand, you are in services business, you are trying to like break into a new market. You're trying to see how your customers might be feeling about the competitors, depending on how big and well-known the competitors are. You can leverage this tool to research what customers might be thinking, what they might be feeling, what their sentiment might be toward a certain trend, certain opportunity, certain market, or certain needs. And you can leverage the data to make informed decisions for your business or your work. All right, moving on. So this is gonna be a little controversial, but the idea is blog posts. You know like how we can use the Gemini deep research tool to like research any topic. And then if you wanna do like SEO, you have to write content, you have to do blogs. And then for blogs, you have to do the research. What if 
you can just use the Gemini tool to better research the content for your blog and then use tools like Claude or ChatGPT or whatever you use to write your blogs or like to polish it or send it to your content writer. So that's the use case. So for example, here we have, you know, this founder perspectives on venture capital industry in the US and Asia. For example, I am a VC firm. I need to like, I want to use this as like a blog post on my company's website. I can take all this research data. I can go to Claude. I can pick the writing style, which I use for writing my blog posts as I can use this information as the content and the notes from a blog post. And boom, we have like Claude writing the blog post based on all the research. If we're using ChatGPT or Claude or Perplexity, I don't think I'll be able to do this depth of research and then turn that research into like the blog post right away. Uh, we may have to do multiple steps, but this is probably the quickest way where you can leverage the deep research tool to do the research on the topic and then write the blog post for it. I'm gonna be actually doing this for my own startup to see if like I'm gonna get traffic on the blogs generated by this workflow. But again, another step you can add if you actually wanna do this is to like also do the keyword research and then within your prompt in Claude or however you're turning this content into the blog post, you can leverage that keyword data as well to like make your blog post a lot better for the SEO. I'm I mean, you may say SEO is dead. If you're using deep research tool, it's gonna go through the articles, whatever is gonna be relevant. If you're using perplexity, if you're using chat GPT, it's still gonna be relevant. It's still gonna be like finding information on the internet. I think like in a way like SEO is still gonna work. It's just gonna be measured differently because you wouldn't be like just measuring website traffic that's coming onto your website through the blog post. We have to find a way to get it integrated into like the whole AI search workflow. That's a separate topic, separate video. I got carried away. Let me know what you think about this in the comments. You know, if it's worth upgrading for you or not. As always, if you like this video, give a thumbs up, subscribe to the channel, it's free if you want to learn more on how to integrate AI in your work and business. I'll see you in the next one.